Hi, New Life. I bet you all recognize what room I'm in. This is the conference room, which used to be called the library, or at least half of it. And we have a lot of conferences here, a lot of meetings, including on the fourth Tuesday of every month, the elders meet here, the session. We begin with prayer at 7 p.m. and a devotion, and we go through business, and we end with prayer also. And you could come in for prayer if you'd so desire. Now, we're looking to add two men to this room, you could say, and that is Luke Brown and Vince Pellerito, and that's why I'm writing this email and filming this video. We're looking for a congregational vote at the end of August. Now, these are two men that were nominated by people in the congregation, and uh, they've been through a lot of training and a lot of time, and uh, they're great men, and we're hoping they'll be elected to the session at the end of August by the congregation. But that brings up this question. What do elders do? And the answer is different depending on what church you're a part of. And what I want to summarize here is what our church government is, our polity, and not just ours here at New Life, but to give you an idea of around the world, the three major options for church government structures. Basically, any church has to choose one of these three or, an, or a variant of it. One, a lot of churches have local church independence or autonomy. This is called the congregational church government option. Congregational. So each congregation really retains its own authority to ordain ministers, church discipline. Um, think of Baptist churches. Think of Mennonite churches. Um, I grew up Mennonite. Think of most non-denominational churches. Local congregational authority. Now in practice that could mean that inside that congregation uh, the senior pastor has a lot of authority. Or it could be a board of elders or they might call them deacons. There's, there's different options, but the point is that local congregation calls the shots. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we have Episcopalian government. And this is when an individual bishop oversees or has authority over multiple churches in a region. So this could be a bishop of San Diego or a bishop of Paris. And this is the Episcopalian Church or the Church of England, of course, you can see that in the name, but also it's the, the Roman Catholic Church has this structure. So does the United Methodist Church, which I was a part of in college. Presbyterian is kind of in the middle where we have connections to other churches like this structure, but we don't have an individual with that much authority and we don't have individual congregations either like this one. All right, now, here's how it works. Elders gather together, not just here, once a month for new life um, purposes, but also in the Philadelphia Presbytery. That's our presbytery. Well, elders from um, 10th Presbyterian Church, 3rd Reformed Church, New Life, we gather together and we do things like, again, ordain ministers, church discipline. We actually meet, here's what this means. We, each congregation, therefore, is under accountability to other churches in its region. Accountability to other churches in its region, unlike this, which is more uh, autonomous. And it's to multiple elders from multiple churches in the region, not to an individual bishop overseeing that region. Okay? So when we say Presbyterian, this isn't just saying elders have uh, things to do here at New Life, but also within the Philadelphia Presbytery. And then once a year, the elders in the Presbyterian Church in America gather at General Assembly, and they do business together. So um, that's what elders are about. It's not just here, but it's in Philadelphia and actually throughout the PCA in North America. So I should tell you more about elders in a different video, including what are the qualifications for elder? It's good to revisit that from 1 Timothy and Titus. So that's for another video. Thanks.